Recently, nearly 80 farmers from Monroe and Lenawee counties in Michigan made trips to Lake Erie over two days to learn how agricultural conservation practices can help prevent harmful algal blooms, thanks in part to 2014 County Farm Bureau Conservation MEEP educational grants. Their destination was put in bay, with the first stop being Ohio State University's Water Quality Lab and Aquatic Visitor Center. There they got to see an historic fish hatchery and were presented with information on the algal blooms that occur in Lake Erie now and then. This issue with Lake Erie is not just a one county or a one state situation. It's a situation where farmers, municipalities, industries all need to come together to help each other in finding innovative solutions and in implementing more conservation on the ground. Well, we do know that farmers really do care about the land and that they really do value the Great Lakes and that they really, really are interested in being a part of helping to restore Lake Erie. The group boarded two research vessels and made their way to Stone Laboratory, where they met with OSU professor Dr. Jeffrey Reuter, director of the Ohio Sea Grant Program and Stone Lab since 1971. Established in 1895, it's the oldest freshwater biological station in the United States and the Center for Teaching and Research on Lake Erie. Participants also gathered to discuss just what types of conservation practices are useful in keeping nutrients in the field and out of waterways. There's several practices out there. There's, there's a lot of technology available that can help this situation. I mean, you go to uh, what I consider the basic one of them all, soil sampling. Now, people that, that know the numbers behind soil sampling, there's not as many people soil sampling as they should be. I find that hard to believe in our neighborhood. I mean, everybody is sampling, has been for years. But the people that know those figures say that soil sampling is number one. Um, things as simple as filter strips, to filter the water, you know, before it runs off and goes into the stream. Um, those are the two of the simplest things to do. Um, you know, you can get into GPS, um, variable rate spreading, grid sampling, things along that line with the technology we have. All those things add up and can have a big impact. Ten watersheds in three states feed into Lake Erie, with two of the ten in Michigan. In the six counties within those two watersheds, there are a total of 221 MEEP verifications. Those who've participated in MEEP, the Voluntary Michigan Agriculture Environmental Assurance Program, have undoubtedly helped with their conservation practices, preventing 1.5 million pounds of phosphorus, 3.4 million pounds of nitrogen, and 1.75 billion pounds of sediment from reaching Michigan waterways. If you become a meat verified farm and all the systems that you're able to become verified in, that does give you a little extra protection under right to farm and the potential for what could be changing, you know, if EPA were to come in and make different rules and regulations on what can be applied to fields and when, it gives you the ability to continue practices as you currently are um, doing them, but also know that with your verification, you're re-verified every three years. So the verifier is going to make sure that what you initially said you were doing, you are still doing. If not, also looking at ways to reduce what you're applying while still re getting the same yield goals that you're looking for. Conservation practices come at a price, and thanks to USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service, farmers can secure NRCS cost share dollars to help put practices into place to become meat verified and to protect Michigan's natural resources. You can learn more at meep.org.